Like a lot of people, I love history. It shows us who we once were, who we are now, and it acts as a looking glass into both the past and the future. Well, today, I'm at the Esquimalt Canadian Forces Base at the Naval and Military Museum, and we're gonna check out some Canadian military history. Let's go. So I'm down here at the Naval and Military Museum. I'm here with Paul, who is a volunteer here. Nice to meet you, Paul. Pleased to meet you. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? How long you've been volunteering here for? Well, I retired from the military in 2002 after 35 years. Okay. Uh, my wife said I had to get out of the house. <laughs> I was interfering with her routine. So I knew this place existed, so I came down here and offered my services. So I've been here since uh, September of 2002. All right, so we're standing in the exhibit uh, that's the Battle of the Atlantic during the Second World War. That, that's correct. Uh, can you tell me, tell us and the viewer a little bit about what that battle was? Well, the battle was uh, very important to Canada because we had to supply Great Britain with all their war supplies. At the time uh, when the war started in 1939, we only had a very small navy, six destroyers, five minesweepers, and two auxiliary vessels, a total of 13. Mm -hmm. The expansion was, was huge, it was immediate. At the end of the Second World War, we had the third largest navy in the world, 480 ships. So we went from 13 to 480 almost overnight, which is almost unheard of. Caused a lot of problems, you know, training and, and maintenance and logistics was a big thing, but you know, you had to do what you had to do. And we were really, from what I recall, we were really responsible for the convoys going we were, across to, to Britain to supply the war effort, right? Exactly, that's correct. And in 1944, we had all the convoys that going across to Great Britain. You know, from D-Day happened, all those convoys going across were escorted by the Royal Canadian Navy. So we are now standing next to what would have been a, well, a, a mess deck back in the Second That's World War, correct? The mess deck is where the crew uh, lived, you know, they ate there, they slept there, did all the socializing there. So initially at the start of the war, it'd be 12 to 15 people in this mess deck. At the end of the mid-war, it'd be between 25 and 30. So you can imagine how crowded this is. Because you had to sleep here, you had to eat here, you did all your socializing here. But the other thing I wanted to point out, that there was another function for the, uh, the hammock. It was, uh, if you were killed at sea, they couldn't keep you on board because there's no refrigeration. They didn't have refrigeration in the ships until well late into the Second World War, and that's primarily for medicine. So if you died, say there's a battle, you know, you're laying there on the deck, what are they gonna do with you? They can't keep you there. So this was your shroud. And they lay, take all your belongings off, all your clothes, any personal markings, jewelry, anything that would identify you, that could be removed, like a dog tag. Yeah. They lay you on your, your hammock, which be laid out, they roll it all up, and then they start sewing it up, you know, because they're going to throw you over the side, and then uh, they throw you over the side of the, the well, ship. in a ceremony. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> and of course, the last turn of the needle goes through your nose. This is a tradition way back, thousands of years ago. And what's well, what's the, the reason thing? being, you got to remember, thousands, you know, say, thirteen hundred. Yeah. You know, how do I know you're dead? There's no doctor on board. They said, well, kick him. Oh. Well, stick a needle in his nose and you have an involuntary reaction. If you reacted, they send you back on watch. If you didn't, they sewed you up and then they uh, put your... Uh, wow. Put you on a gurney, you know, in your hammock, and they'd have a ceremony. They usually stop the ship in a safe place. And it might be you, it might be 20 other people with you, you know, all big. Yeah. And as each one is, uh, the gurney is turned up, you slide from underneath the flag. They ding the bell, or ding, ding per person, so you then slide into the ocean to make a note in the ship's log so that they send a message to your family, your, your son or daughter, you know, uh, was killed at sea and is buried at sea position, such and such. There's so many great and interesting stories here at this museum. It's actually kind of a little overwhelming how much information there is. Uh, but there's one thing that's for sure, and that's I'll be back to check out more of our nation's history. For Shaw TV Victoria, I'm Tyler Hooper.